Hello Exile, Altex UK here. We're reaching the end of the first week of the league, and it's been a roller coaster ride. The character is finally feeling pretty good. This morning I ran my first tier 16 Deathless, which is good. First tier 16 at all, not Deathless. I haven't died lots. Well, I have died lots, but not in tier 16. The build's gone through some enhancements. The first enhancement is we've added Enduring Cry, just for the extra life regen. That's massive, and it gives us endurance charges without having to get them on the tree. Because with this build, when we get maximum endurance charges, we take 10% less damage. Okay, the gear is actually starting to look pretty good. I have spent about 2.5x maybe on this character now. And actually, speaking of bank, we have 4 exults and 47 chaos. So what's the gear? We have 2 wands, so a dual wielding. And they both have plus one to level of all physical skill gems and X percent to physical damage over time multiplier. They're the two key roles. Everything else is just stats and some fizz damage. Not that that helps much. For the gloves, we're using apothecaries and they have 17% increased damage over time. I ran out of, what are the orbs called? Blessed orbs to actually roll that higher. And the key roll on here is socketed gem steal 30% more damage over time. I spam this with three delirium essences and I managed to get one with 15% increased attack speed. So that was good. My boots, I just bought these. Increased armor, cold resist, light resist, movement speed and life. And I managed to just roll on a Searing Exarch mod of plus one to maximum fire resist. So our fire resistances are now 78% instead of 75. All the other resists are 76. So that should help a lot. Now on the helmet, that sort of helps because I have physical damage from hits taken as fire damage at 6%, which takes some of the fizz off, puts it to fire, which then 78% of that just vanishes. 8% increased area of effect, that probably needs to be replaced. On the body armor, we got 125 life, 143 armor, 40 strength, fire resist, and 8% increased maximum life, and 8% increased maximum mana. And I managed to roll on 16% increased global physical damage, and plus 5 to all elemental resistances. The plus 5 to all element resistances was pretty good at the time. In fact, it's still good now, it's keeping us above minimum. My rings. I managed to get a vulnerability ring. This was probably the most expensive piece on the build so far. It's also got 36 dexterity and life. And a tiny bit of resistances. Now, in order to put this on, I did need to buy a different ring with intelligence on it. And also a load of resistances that filled the gap that I lost the resistances on this ring. And the ring I've got is Intelligence, All Res, Fire Res, Life, and Cold Res. Okay, my amulets, we have Dexterity and Intelligence, 21% to damage over time multiplier. And I do want to get another one, because I need plus one to all spell skill gems, or plus one to physical skill gems, which will help a lot. And this is anointed with Acrimony, which gives us 15% increased damage over time multiplier for fizz. And the last piece of gear is the belt. We have gone for a leather belt with a ton of life, lightning resist, dexterity and intelligence. Could be better. For Sentinels, we're now using two of them. We're using the Pandemonium and the Stalker. And onto the tree, we've made some changes. I've rolled off through the speed and life, and I've put, just gone straight strength down the left-hand side. That saved us some gems to allow me to come and get this extra life here, and the life regen. I've decided life regen is really important on this build. The next three nodes I'm gonna get are probably gonna be this one which is combat stamina, gives us 20% increased armor, 5% life, and 1% life regen. And on the way to it, we've got regenerates 0.5 life per second and 10% increased armor and life. This morning, I rerolled my cluster jewel to get better notables. We got battle harden for 35% increased fizz, and we got master of the fundamentals for 35% increased fizz. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough jagged fossils and I couldn't get anyone to sell me any to actually try and roll my three. So I stopped once I reached two. And the other node we've added up here is this small cluster jewel. And this gives us 4% increased maximum life per node. And then the big node gives us 8%. And then every four seconds we regenerate 10% of life over one second. So it's all about survivability from this point on. Because the beginning of the league was extremely rough. As I mentioned in my previous video. And then I've just started to collect these really powerful jewels now. Which are basically triple damage so we've got increased global fizz fizz damage over time and attack speed and we're still using our poachers aim from act 5 for the extra pierce at some point it's probably better to switch that over to a more damaging jewel but for now we'll leave it because it's doing well 
We are still in Spell Slinger. I have been contemplating moving over, but I don't dare to make the jump because it's currently working. But we are going to do it at some point. We're going to switch off Spell Slinger and go completely CF. The Spell Slinger is Spell Slinger, Control Destruction, Exsanguinate, and I've also got Reap. The combination of those two do a lot of damage on top of Corrupting Fever. And I finally got a Six Link, which is Life on Hit, Kinetic Blast, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Life Tap, Maim, and Culling Strike. The Culling Strike isn't giving us a lot, it's giving us 35% increased damage and it's also killing them. I suppose it's 10% more multiplier because we're killing them at 10% life instead of zero. I just don't feel it's optimal. And I'm thinking maybe swap that out with Rage at some point. Um, I have killed both the Black Moon and the big guy that lives in the swamp. I did that on a four link for the guy in the swamp and a five link for Black Moon. It wasn't an amazing fight. The pinnacle boss damage doesn't appear to be there quite yet, but it is killing map bosses really quickly, as you saw with the Katava kill on the tier 16. It's just those pinnacle bosses are a pain. And I haven't got my first watchstone yet. And we also got to level 91, and we're about 26% of the way through to 92. Defensively, we're doing pretty well. We have 75% physical damage reduction. We're fully capped on resistances, we have minus 52 to chaos, and we're plus 8 to chaos damage over time. And that's really it, that's the end of the first week. Hopefully in the coming weeks we will destroy the end game. And I still haven't decided yet whether to stick with Kinetic Blast or switch to Explosive Arrow. If you are building a build similar to this, let me know how it's gone in the comments below, and if you've done anything majorly different to me, also let me know. And what have you used instead of Culling Strike, if anything different? And with that, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time.